School Board meeting for Cape Elizabeth uh, for Tuesday, May 11th, 1999. Um, starting off on the agenda is the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, moving along, uh, we look at adjustments to the agenda. I have two additional nominations. Okay. Two nominations. Um, under new business. Yes. Um, other adjustments? Just in terms of uh, this agenda this evening, um, we will not be in any depth discussing the budget. Uh, we will, however, have another public budget workshop um, on the 25th of, of May, and that will be at uh, 7 p.m. at the high school library. That's when the workshop begins. The first topic will be uh, football, which will probably go for about a half an hour, and then at 7.30, we will have a public um, uh, budget workshop. So that's when we'll be discussing the budget and Keith will uh, give a, a little bit of an update under communications. Moving on to approval of the April school board uh, minutes. Any uh, concerns or revisions that need to be looked at? Seeing none, I'll move on and we will have um, comments from our high school representative. Good evening, I'm Jeff Butterworth, a senior at Cape Elizabeth High School. Uh, Alicia's not with us this evening, but I'm sure if she could be, she, she would. Um, <clears throat> once again, we have nothing but good news to bring you from the high school. I'm glad this is all I've given you all year. Maybe I just haven't seen the bad stuff. Um, <clears throat> we have the musical coming up again this year. This is the third year in a row that we've done a musical. Uh, this was, uh, previously we did Guys and Dolls, uh, that was last year, and the year before, Once Upon a Mattress. This year, the musical will be the rock opera Tommy by The Who, and uh, that will be, um, the performances will be taking place on the 27th, 28th, and 30th of May. Uh, I believe that's a Thursday, a Friday, and a Sunday. So, for those of you who want to write that down in your calendars, it should be a good show. Um, recently, uh, we had the prom uh, at the uh, Merritt at Sable Oaks. That went very well uh, for both the junior and senior classes. Um, the band, uh, the band was a surprise to some people. I myself was concerned that they would have horns. They did. Uh, so <clears throat> I, was, I was pleased to see that. And uh, both the Marriott staff and police uh, that were hired to be there at the occasion were very pleased uh, th again this year with our performance and our behavior. And so hopefully we'll be, in, we'll be allowed back and, uh, with, with open arms. Um, all of our sports teams are having very successful seasons so far. Uh, I believe we have track and field, lacrosse, both boys and girls, and softball and baseball. And uh, all sports are doing well. Uh, they're, they've begun their games, and uh, they're on their way to the championships, I hope, every one of them. Um, I'm not sure if it was mentioned during the last, um, during the last school board meeting, but uh, our math team came in second in the state, and, we're, and they went on to the New England finals in Massachusetts, where they finished 19th out of 21st. Uh, Oh, ninth, I'm sorry, ninth, better than I thought. Ninth out of 21, wow, I'm impressed. Ninth out of 21 in, uh, in our division uh, for the New England. That's, uh, that's a very impressive feat. Um, also during, uh, during school this week uh, and a bit of last week, I believe we have the AP testing going on. That's for all the AP classes, uh, such as the advanced physics, uh, advanced foreign languages, as well as English and government. Uh, so hopefully students should be getting uh, rest and and uh, excelling well on their, on their tests, so proving our, uh, proving our academic prowess in Cape Elizabeth High School. Thank you very much. Is there uh, any questions? Are there? Questions? I don't think so. Thank you very much. The Thank next, you very much. The next board meeting is June 8th. Will you still be with us on June 8th? I will be there. I will be there to help induct the, uh, the other members, the new members. So. Jeff, right. the, uh, the prom was outstanding. 
Oh, yes, that's It was right. truly outstanding. I it was. I did a chaperone for a few hours. Impeccable. Mm. Well, it, thank you for showing up. <laughs> did well. Right. Jeff, I'm going to pass this down to uh, Marie. I know you're uh, wanting something from me there. Sure. That's, that's just to get back to Mr. Oh. Dawson is all it has to be done. <laughs> oh, I thought it was supposed to go to Jeff. Oh. No, no. No. Oh, no. Well, thank you, ultimately, Mark. he will get one, I assume. Right? Uh, I suppose. Yeah, I'll put it back in the envelope <laughs> for safekeeping. <laughs> Maybe. Well, that'll, that'll depend. He has, to, he has to be him, so. Uh, <laughs> all right. Um, will that be it? Thank you, Jeff. Okay. Thank you very much. Now, um, our report from the middle school rep. Uh, good evening. I'm Marianne Chapman. Uh, Amelia Wiggins was not able to come tonight, I guess. Um, <laughs> this month, we have primarily eighth grade news. Um, there's a lot going on in the eighth grade. Uh, recognition night is going to be on June 10th, and our student council president, Jimmy Salikas, will be giving a speech, as most presidents do every year, I guess. And I believe two teachers will be chosen to speak as well. Um, the eighth grade went to Augusta today. We were able to see both the Senate and the House of Representatives in session, and it was really interesting to see how they worked. Um, the band will be going back next week to play for the legislature. Um, the student council elections for eighth grade, um, who are going for the eighth graders that are going into the high school, are being held next week. I believe the speeches are going to be on Wednesday, and then the students will vote on Thursday. Um, this week is also Spirit Week. Um, the kids are really getting into the into it this year, and today was Clash Day, so it was very interesting to see everyone's outfits, and they did very well with their clashing. Um, okay, the eighth, seventh and eighth grade band and chorus concert is scheduled for tomorrow night, and tomorrow during the day they will play for the middle school students down at the high school. Um, and that's about it. Any questions? Questions from your hand? Thank you very much. Good Thanks. job. We'll now move on to communications. Hi, everyone. I just wanted to make a quick report of our budget process. Uh, uh, last night, in case you didn't know or hadn't heard, uh, the town council voted six to nothing to reduce uh, the school portion of the budget by $70,000 or the to either reduce the budget or reduce or increase the revenue. Uh, as George mentioned, we'll have a workshop on this on uh, two weeks from tonight on the 25th uh, uh, and work out that uh, the town council does have that uh, purview where they can specify a, a bottom line amount. We have to decide where that money is going to come from or be brought in to. So that's where that stands at this point. Okay, thank you. To George. Yeah. Peter, I may step on your toes on this one a little bit. If I do, stop me. Um, safety concerns are uh, widespread at this point, and I understand that our natural high helpers at the high school will be sponsoring some roundtable discussions on safety issues and uh, related items. That will take place next Wednesday, 19th at 7 p.m. I uh, would strongly urge everyone to make an effort to attend. Um, I'm particularly interested in what our students have to say about these issues. Additionally, the Cape Coalition had already um, scheduled a uh, series of roundtable discussions beginning on Thursday night, May, 9th, May 20th. I believe, yeah, May 20th. It's the fall, It's the night following the high school event um, on a broader town-wide discussion of safety issues and concerns. And again, I would welcome, uh, invite you as a member of the coalition to participate in that one as well. Okay. Other communications? I just have one, um, and uh, it's a recognition in terms of uh, volunteers. Uh, we have been recognizing our volunteers 
And on behalf of the board, um, I want to ex extend a, a big thank you and appreciation to all of the volunteers that really um, enrich our school community. Um, I received word that um, there were three volunteers that were selected to represent the many, many volunteers that we have. Megan Donovan, who is at the Cape High School as a sophomore. Um, Karen Johnson, who is a parent um, uh, who's been involved with uh, both the middle school and Pond Cove. And Brian White, who is a Cape High School junior, um, all uh, being recognized um, and honored at the Blaine House on uh, May 18th. Um, and again, representing the many, many uh, volunteers that we have in the community and uh, what a rich community we have. Um, other communications? Seeing none, then we'll move on to the superintendent's report. First item is an update on kindergarten issues. Uh, last week we had a meeting with a group of uh, interested and concerned kindergarten parents. All of the parents who were there have children currently in the kindergarten and most of them have younger children who are coming along up to kindergarten age, so they have a variety of concerns. Also present were all of the kindergarten teachers, Catherine Cornell, Amy Karen, uh, Deborah Jordan Pearson, Suzanne Hamilton, and Linda Paul, uh, Tom Eismeyer, Eismeyer and Myla Bono, Peter Dawson and Dwight Ely, and myself and Paulina Portray, the business manager. And we had discussed a variety of concerns. A number of them are general safety concerns, and other concerns are really related to the unique aspects of a kindergarten program that's housed in a high school. And I'll just run through uh, some of them. They're basically short-term solutions and suggestions as well as long-term. Uh, one of the suggestions was that we install surveillance cameras in the high school, and I think as administrators, we feel that that really has very little value in terms of prevention. It may very well be helpful to the police after the fact, but would not really help us in terms of making the school particularly <coughs> safe. Uh, we need to more closely monitor the kindergarten bathrooms, and we have a plan in place for that. Uh, some of the parents feel that the high school students should not be in the kindergarten wing. Currently, we have two math classes who occupy the two classrooms in the kindergarten wing. Uh, both of those class, classroom teachers are seasoned teachers who have very good student management skills. So we still feel at this point that perhaps that's a, a workable option. Uh, they asked about an in, to institute a visitor sign-in pass kind of system at the high school. Uh, they suggested perhaps a wall between the high school and the kindergarten wing. They asked about the PA system and they want to be sure that the PA system in fact, the high school PA system in fact does work in the kindergarten. They also asked about adding a staff person to monitor visitors in the kindergarten wing and also to monitor the bathroom usage. As I mentioned, we had some short-term suggestions as well as long-term. Our immediate response as a short-term solution is to hire an ed tech one who will be stationed, for lack of a better word, at the beginning of the kindergarten wing. All of the doors in the kindergarten wing will remain locked so that all people coming into the kindergarten will have to go through the main high school door and then this person will monitor and be sure that anyone who comes through is there on an appropriate uh, mission. And also this person will monitor uh, any usage of the bathroom by high school students. We've been doing that on a volunteer basis this week. The board will, uh, I think tonight we've talked about a finance committee, will approve that position for the remainder of the year and that will give us a chance to assess that situation. I think the parents feel that that area is a little bit isolated. There is not a full-time secretary there. We do have an ed tech, but the ed tech generally is in the classrooms working with the children. So the addition of this person will help in terms of monitoring any uh, extraneous uh, activity in that wing. The long-term suggestions were to move the kindergarten out of the high school, to purchase modular units for the kindergarten classroom, to put the kindergarten in the community services space, or to put the kindergarten back in Pond Cove and put the eighth grade in the high school. Now obviously those are not, none of those are easy solutions and they're ones that will require a considerable amount of discussion. But for the purposes of the meeting, uh, we will do the short term solution in terms of monitoring the activity in the kindergarten wing. We do have another meeting scheduled for May, excuse me. May 18th at 11.15, and that's an open meeting, and that will be held in the kindergarten section of the high school. I guess the other thing I wanted to say was that 
the proximity of the kindergarten students to the high school. There are some parents who have concerns about that, but there are, I think the feeling was from the kindergarten teachers that there were many uh, assets to being there, that they heavily use the, the high school students, they're very helpful, they've asked for more high school students to come in and participate with the kindergarten students. So that, that's not a universal feeling that, that that's a, a, not a good place for the kindergarten students, but certainly need to ensure that they're safe. There also was a conversation about locking all of the doors at the high school and having only the main door open. And I, Peter spoke very eloquently to that topic. I don't know whether you want to comment now as to why that isn't a good option for the high school at this point in time. Certainly locking all the kindergarten doors is an appropriate option. I thought I did it so well that day. Well, <laughs> the word hasn't spread all through town. They haven't heard what you had to say, so. Uh, <laughs> Please. Um, I think the main point that we were making at that time is that um, if locking the doors to the high school would provide a secure building, um, I, I would tend to consider it very heavily and do it in a minute probably. My feeling is that, uh, that it doesn't and, and in fact it creates a false, it's one of those window dressing types of options that creates a false sense of security, um, makes you feel that you've done something that uh, in the end is really not all that important. We have students going in and out um, all, the, all the time for appointments uh, to eat outside at the picnic tables. Uh, the atmosphere uh, of the high school is, is very important and, and, and is, it's affected very importantly in that way. Um, my feeling is that by trying to lock the doors, first we, we probably would have um, minimal chances of, of actually being able to uh, keep them um, locked in any building that I've ever been in. Uh, in any high school building that I've ever been in where there has been locked doors with as many entrances as we have. Uh, there's the constant temptation to put uh, sticks or stones in the door to keep them open. And so it would require one person constantly going through to make sure that they're locked. And as I say, it, it ends up being a window dressing uh, type of uh, approach that doesn't really address security um, and, uh, and makes you feel like you've done something. Uh, our, our approach has been to look at the larger picture of the things that, that I think really matter in terms of safety and that is, and those are basically the emphases of the, uh, of the two meetings that Kevin spoke uh, of, uh, and that is how do we go about uh, building uh, and continuing to foster an even stronger, even more inclusive sense of school community. Uh, last week was Teacher Appreciation Week, although we are letting it extend a little bit longer here. And although it's nice to have Teacher Appreciation Week, I want to be sure that everyone knows that we really do appreciate our teachers and our staff all year long. So, uh, the eighth grade has been invited to play at the State Capitol, and that's on May 18th at 9 a.m. with Terry White. I don't know that Nancy was going to mention that again also. We've also been asked to collect coins for Kosovo. Each of the schools has a collection bank, and this money will go to the Red Cross and will be shipped on to the appropriate agencies. If you've listened to most of the reports, they really don't need clothes or that sort of thing. What they really need is money. So in each of the three schools, we are collecting money for Kosovo. Okay. I'm, I'm sorry, I do have one other thing. Uh, we have received a resignation, and Cynthia Curry, who is a teacher at the middle school, has resigned, she's a science teacher. She will be moving on to teach at Thornton Academy in Saco, and we're very sorry to lose her. Okay, um, <clears throat> moving on to the principals, yes. Um, can I add one thing, the discussion that we had tonight about adding to our workshop meeting in June, um, kindergarten issues to talk about that? You're making a motion or making a suggestion that that be a topic for the June yes. workshop? Yes. The board agrees, that's fine. And we'll notify, when the parents come for the meeting next week, we'll notify them of that if, that's, if the board is in agreement. Yes? Yes. yes. And that will be the 22nd of June. <coughs> um, moving on to the principal's report, uh, Pond Cove, Tom. 
Good evening. Uh, you're probably all aware that May is a very busy month in the elementary school. We're in the midst of a series of grade level music concerts. Um, I really want to publicly thank Judy Ferrante for all the work she puts into it and the results have been quite impressive so far. It also means that the teachers have to be very flexible in the way they run their classes uh, for rehearsals and so on. The third grade is busy shuttling back and forth to Portland um, doing their local history. It's part of their uh, course of study that has been part of the social studies curriculum for a number of years. We had uh, visiting artists in this, this week and next week will be Nance Comins who's working with grade one. If you, well, you've, you've seen the results of some of the work she's done with kids in her prior visits with the uh, imaginative creatures that are in the lobby. And she's doing similar work this year with grade one. Sarah Berman has arranged for um, peer mediators, student mediators from Reiki School to visit Pond Cove this Thursday so they can uh, compare notes and strategies with their um, Cape Elizabeth counterparts. Um, speaking of teacher appreciation, the Pond Cove Parents Association did their annual luncheon for teachers last week. The, the, the theme this year was Cinco de Mayo, which was close enough, and everybody appreciated not, not just the food, but the atmosphere and, and the good cheer in the middle of the day. I'm always asking them to do, do it more often, but it's, it's quite a lot of work, and we really appreciate that annual event. The, uh, Parents Association, Association is also sponsoring a fundraising activity which encourages kids to read books on their own. For each book that they finish and get verified by their parents, um, they are given a little um, paper worm, a bookworm. And these worms are now extending from the lobby up and down the corridors of Pond Cove. The chain seems to be growing every day. So it, it's not just the money we're raising, it's the uh, visual rec um, reward for the kids to see uh, their work up on the wall. It's been mentioned before, uh, Peter's talked about uh, building security and uh, Kevin's mentioned it. At Pond Cove, the recent tragic events have reminded us that there are little things we can do around the building. So we are really going to be quite strict about limiting entry to Pond Cove. It's different from the high school community um, and we're not, we have no illusions that this will prevent violence. It's the day-to-day -day feeling of security about knowing who's in the school and uh, who's, who's around the hall. So uh, pretty soon, as soon as we can work it out with maintenance and get the keys, there will be one door to Pond Cove. People will come in through the main door. Instead of just signing in, as we have done in the past, people will be asked to wear a visitor's pass. They'll be loaned the pass and they'll return it when they leave. We've tried this for the past week and I really want to thank the people who have come in and uh, graciously agreed to do that. And I, I think it's actually improved the atmosphere at Pond Cove. And thanks, uh, George mentioned uh, how rich we are in uh, volunteer opportunities and people to do it uh, in Cape Elizabeth. On very short notice, Gail Schmader was able to recruit people uh, to staff what we're calling the receptionist desk in the kindergarten wing. And we had volunteers out there today so that when we, have, I'm very pleased to hear that you can fund the position. By the time we get to hiring somebody, we will be more specific about what the job descriptions are and what the uh, parameters are for that job. I really want to thank the kindergarten parents, not just for bringing those security issues to our attention, but for helping out. It's, uh, I think it'll really help. We're in the midst of uh, placement, another annual rite at Pond Cove. Um, we've had a great deal of interest in looping um, over 60 Kindergarten families have expressed interest in being in a one-two loop for the next two years. And our next concern is to make sure we can get two balanced groups out of that. And so far, so good. Almost that number of families has expressed interest to be in a two-three loop. So we have the numbers and now the teachers are working hard to make sure those groups reflect the general balance of the grade level. But so far, so good. A quick update on enrollment. The uh, kindergarten enrollment is about where it is, where it was last year at this time. It's in the low 100s. When last time I talked to Cynthia, I think we had exactly 100. Now we have about 104, which is close to our cutoff. We were anticipating a few more um, kindergarten registrations soon. We have to have about 112, 114 to have seven sections, and I'll keep you up to date on that. But so far, it looks like we're right on target. And of all things, the grade uh, two projected enrollment is up slightly. 
We have four more children uh, either entering or already here in grade one or signing up for grade two, and that puts the, the uh, average class side projected for grade two next year at 22. And uh, finally, just um, for long-term plans, Pond Cove has been accepted in the literacy collaborative that's run out of the U University of Maine in Orono. We have a representative team that will be uh, attending their first workshop in August of all times to uh, get some training and develop some common ground and language for our literacy study next year, no matter what happens with the literacy position. So, any questions? Point of clarification. I didn't understand what you said about the grade one and grade two in reference to the, the numbers. Would you clarify that, please? Grade two is now up to, uh, projected for next year, I'm sorry, is up to 131, which is slightly higher than the figures that you were given during the budget season. I think gave you one, I need my reading glasses, 126. It's out now up to 131. And the, the projection for grade one, kindergarten coming to one, is just about on target. I, I thought we might have 125. We have 126 at the moment. Thank you. Other questions? And the other relevant figure for John is uh, 10 RBIs last night for somebody, right? I don't know. I don't know the name. You don't know the name. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Tom. Um, high school, Peter? First, I'd like to quickly comment on uh, something that Jeff already brought to your attention. The, the prom was a, a, an immense success in all, by all measures in terms of the type of time that the students had, but especially from my standpoint uh, in the way that they carried themselves. Not only, I think Jeff used the word allowed to come back to the Marriott, the representatives from the Marriott were coming up to me quickly uh, at the end of the evening, uh, pressing business cards on me, asking me to please consider them next year that they would take our group of students anytime. Um, so would I. They were, they were great uh, and uh, was very appreciative of the way that they handled themselves. This past Friday was a, a busy day in, in many ways. Not only was it the prom, but as you know, we hosted the uh, regional uh, Special Olympics. Um, while five of our students were competing, um, hundreds were helping out in all kinds of ways uh, throughout the kind of misty, foggy, drizzly day. Uh, only the weather was uh, less than perfect. The rest of it went very well. I um, want to remind you that graduation is set for Friday, June 11th at 2 o'clock. Um, we will follow the same drill as last year, that uh, uh, primary location will be Fort Williams. I'll make that decision around 8.30 in the morning, depending on weather reports. Uh, at that point, if it's decided that it's coming back to the high school, it will be, uh, the, the decision as to whether it's inside or outside will be delayed as long as possible, probably till around 11.30 or 12, which would still give us time to set up the chairs and risers in, in whichever place we needed them. Uh, and that will be based on uh, the, the weather forecasts at that time. Certainly it's our hope that we're outside and I think the students are very hopeful that we will be at Fort Williams. Um, the, parents uh, the High School Parents Association will be, um, will be throwing a teacher appreciation luncheon this Thursday, May 13th. This follows uh, two appreciation breakfasts that have gone on during the year. Those events are always uh, much anticipated and very much appreciated. Uh, and everybody is looking forward to this Thursday. I think the Parents Association really uh, does those events with a great deal of class, and, and as I say, the, the extra touches that they put in are, are noticed and appreciated. I wanted to bring to your attention uh, an honor that one of our teachers just received, uh, Ted Jordan, who is uh, in his second year of teaching uh, at the high school in the social studies department, was just recognized by Bowdoin College as a Bowdoin Distinguished Teacher. Uh, that honor was bestowed uh, through a process where uh, when students enter Bowdoin, they are asked to write an essay uh, on a teacher who had the greatest impact, greatest positive impact uh, on them. 
Ted was mentioned by a former student of his uh, at Brunswick High School uh, and was then selected as one of the, I believe, 30 uh, Bowdoin Distinguished Teachers throughout the state who were honored in a luncheon uh, last week. Uh, I think it was a great thrill. I've talked with Ted. It was a great thrill for him and uh, true to his nature, the, the thing that was most important about it, um, despite all of the, the tours that they gave them and the visits to the art museum and so forth, the biggest thrill for him was that the student who nominated him was there and he had the opportunity to uh, sit down to luncheon uh, with her and he really uh, enjoyed that process. So well deserved and uh, we congratulate Ted. Um, the other uh, news um, it centers around pre-registration and scheduling and so forth. We're in the middle of that, pro well, now we're past the middle of the pre-registration process and are probably a day away from coming up with uh, our master schedule, which is the actual arrangement of uh, courses within the, uh, within the schedule. Um, it seems to be uh, moving relatively smoothly uh, with our, our new administrative software plays a role in that, but uh, probably a, a bigger uh, role is played by the fact that we are in the process of changing uh, the way our schedule uh, looks for next year. Um, I've been talking with students in the, in the SAC and, and going over possibilities and with the faculty primarily for uh, probably three reasons. We decided that, uh, that it, it is very necessary to uh, come up with a change. Uh, probably the driving reason was the fact that with the schedule, the way we work it now, um, we had to offer double periods in order to uh, handle the possibility for laboratory uh, lab experiments in uh, science. Um, what that does is, is when you take that uh, double period, the double period only comes around once every eight days. But because of that, a student who, for example, signs up for six courses has to make a decision. They have to either block out seven periods in order to make their lab fit, or they have to talk with the teacher of a seventh course and let them know that they would um, like to miss that class once every two cycles, um, which generally isn't a good I idea for, I mean, there are students that can handle it, but it's, it's not a great idea. So one, we needed to find a way to solve that problem. And then two and three had to do with the complexity of the schedule. We have a, a very complex schedule as it is with many, many singleton offerings, uh, courses that are offered only once in a, in a day. Um, and with that, you need to uh, somehow build as much flexibility as you can build into it. The double science lab was uh, tying our master schedule in knots and making it impossible for us to move courses around. And in the same way, it was making it very difficult for students to, take, uh, to be scheduled for all of the courses that they would um, like. So what we've, what we've looked at and are uh, in the process of uh, adopting is what I call a hybrid schedule. It's not, a, uh, it's not by any means uh, a block schedule. It's basically a modification of our current schedule, but adding in the opportunity for every course to have one long period every eight days. So the normal periods will be 50 minutes in length with an 85 minute period once every uh, eight calendar days or every six days that the class actually meets. Um, this will, the other advantage of this is that it will allow every class the opportunity to try different types of learning activities and not just the uh, science classes which have the, uh, which have the lab. Um, it will take some uh, adjusting. It, it does. Uh, one of the downsides of it is that um, uh, visually it can be a little confusing uh, because uh, days one through, it'll be an eight day cycle and days one through four have the lunch periods at certain times, and days five through eight, the second lunch is the same, but the first lunch is, is uh, a little off. So uh, it does add one complication to a schedule that's already not the simplest thing to, uh, to look at. But I think the, uh, the gains will be uh, well worth it. Uh, we have another model that's, that's similar uh, that we can also uh, try once we, have, once we um, move into this schedule, we could also, if we decided that we weren't crazy about the way it was working out, where uh, and the main feature of this is that once 
every day, there is a period that lasts for 85 minutes. So there, uh, on, on day one through eight, the different periods rotate through and have their 85 minute class. If we decide that we would rather put them in together and have uh, all of the 85 minute periods on two days together, we can easily try that option the second semester and uh, see what, uh, what works best for students, what works, uh, you know, what the teachers uh, feel about them, uh, and then um, uh, react accordingly. Um, I think important to note is that uh, Nancy and I have, have uh, coordinated, although I had forgotten that piece at first, and Nancy gave me a call and reminded me that there were some uh, eighth grade students that take courses at the high school and that we need to keep that in mind, and, and we were able to, uh, uh, it did cause some uh, alterations in what we were planning, but it still uh, works out well for any teachers that we have that cross and any um, students that we have that come over and take classes in the high school. One final advantage is that it will be of benefit to our students who attend the paths uh, because currently um, they, they have to leave 15, minutes, uh, to 15 to 20 minutes early every day to get to paths on, on time. And because of the way our schedule rotates right now, um, six out of eight days they miss, this, they miss the same, they have to leave early from the same class, which is a, a tough, uh, tough load to handle. Now, because of the way we're rotating, uh, they will only um, have to leave early from one particular class. Uh, the most is two out of eight days, and, uh, and, and their other classes, they would miss only one out of eight days. So it's a much better arrangement for the students that are going to the work <coughs> paths and for the teachers of those students. Um, I think the safety issues have been covered. Our, our emphasis is on uh, the long range. We're trying to avoid the uh, knee-jerk uh, reactions, but instead focusing on the long range, uh, as we have been, uh, aspects of building a, a community that, that uh, can trust and include everybody. I'm open to questions. Questions for Peter? You mentioned paths, Peter, which reminded me, and I don't know whether Kevin was going to mention it, but the graduation for our students from paths is on Thursday, May 27th. May 27th at 11.30. At 11.30. All of our students are in the afternoon uh, section, so 11.30 would be the uh, time. And everyone is welcome. I might add that, that we had a sizable delegation last year at that graduation, and the students were immensely appreciative of that. We'll be there again. It's at 11.30. 11.30. <coughs> Questions for Peter? Thank you, Peter. Thank you. Um, middle school, Nancy. Good evening. I'm going to start off with just a reminder of a few dates, but Marianne did a great job with most of these. First of all, in June, which is a busy month in every school, every place that I know of, on June 2nd, in the afternoon from 2.30 to 4, we will have our final social for the fifth and sixth grade students. It is at a different time this year, and it will be in the, in the middle school itself. This is in a reflection of the pool renovation. We will be having karaoke, and they will also have outside games. If it rains, we will have indoor games in the gym. And if it's raining, and if any of you want to drop over for a few moments of fun from 2.30 to 4, we would be happy to see any adults who have a great idea of what to do with about 250 students who thought they were going to be outside playing games. Mm -hmm. We will also have snacks for them, and we look forward to it as a way um, for them. The student council puts on the socials throughout the year. The final social is always put on by the Middle School Parents Association, and the parents are busy at work on that task. On Friday, June 4th, we, the Parents Association will put on the last dance of the year. I emphasize this is important because it is the last dance of the year. It is not a prom. We like to save that for when they're juniors and seniors and they go to Sable Oaks at the Marriott and do a wonderful job with that and we look forward to that. For our final dance, I would just encourage all of the parents who are listening to remember that it's June, it's warm in our gym, and even though students, when they leave the house, may think, particular outfits and especially the height of the shoes that they may choose to wear would be very comfortable. They usually do not last well into the evening and quite honestly sundresses, sandals, sneakers, t-shirts and shorts do have the most 
durability for our event. And we hope that all of the seventh and eighth grade students will come and have a good time. It is not necessary to do anything special other than to show up and bring your good behavior and energy for a good evening. On June 7th, um, in the evening, we will be having, holding an evening orientation for our incoming fifth grade students and their families. The purpose of the evening is very simple. They will meet their fifth grade teaching team, and it's a chance to get introduced to the middle school. Most importantly for the students, it is a chance to see what those teachers look like, hear what they sound like, find out which door they come in, and where their classroom is. It is not curriculum night. We'll be doing those very early at the beginning of the year next year to do that. This purpose is really to invite them and welcome them to the middle school and to introduce them to a few people that they'll see right off when they enter the middle school in the fall. Following up on that same theme, on June 10th, we will be having an internal step-up day for our current students in the middle school. We coordinate this with the high school because it is the afternoon that our current eighth graders go down to the high school and have an orientation there. That allows us to then have an internal step-up day for grades six, seven, and eight. Once again, it's a chance to get a little bit of an overview of what's coming for next year. The sixth graders do meet their teaching teams. They get to go to those classrooms and talk with those teachers. During all of our orientations, whether they be in the evening or an internal one during the day, one of the things we will be reminding students is that the summer reading list will be coming home and that everybody needs to read a minimum of two books over the summer. They are books of their choice, but there's a very early language arts assignment um, in the fall that refers to those summer reading assignments. So we encourage everyone to participate in that activity. Marianne mentioned that on June 10th, we have eighth grade recognition. The Middle School Parents Association is organizing that, and it is an opportunity where we recognize the entire class as a class. It is not an awards assembly. The eighth graders will be having an awards assembly on June 15th, um, starting at 9 o'clock in the cafetorium at 9 a.m., and parents are welcome to attend that. But the June 10th evening is a chance to just recognize the completion of their middle level education as they move on to our high school and to perhaps a few other locations as well. Today, we received the California Achievement Test results, and we are in the process of organizing those so that we can send those home, and parents should expect to see those within the next week, um, arriving home. Shortly, we will also be mailing out to all of the parents our parent feedback forms. These are forms that we ask everyone to fill out for parents such as Jennifer, who have two students in the middle school. She'll get a chance to fill out one for each child. Um, they are color-coded. Um, if parents get the colors mixed up, please don't worry. We can handle that as long as you just put the grade level on the top that they go with. It doesn't matter if you filled out the yellow fifth grade one for your seventh grader. We, we can deal with that information. We do use the feedback to look over in the summertime. I uh, will read through it all. Carmen will read through it. We will share it with the team leaders, and we'll also share it with individual teachers. And it does help us assess how we have reached our goals, how we still need to reach them, and maybe what even new goals we need to set for ourselves. So I appreciate everyone's participation. Tomorrow night, uh, Marianne did mention our band concert at the high school. Just a slight correction, they are going to be doing it for the school on Thursday, May 13th. They do it for the parents first, and then they will do it on Thursday morning um, for the middle school student body, and we thank the high school for their cooperation of letting us stay through the morning of the 13th um, to use the gymnasium so that we can all fit in to view that. A couple of things just briefly to update you on as the year is winding down and some of the closing activities we've been doing for our outdoor experience program. The first part of April, are, or just prior to April vacation actually, our fifth grade teams um, finished up their outdoor experiencing project by working on an orienteering project at Fort Williams. They were working with the Cape Elizabeth Land Trust on that activity. And actually I need to make a correction, I believe they did that right after April vacation. They had a very good time, they look forward to going back to Fort Williams next year. Um, if you remember, earlier this year we started off with some activities at Camp Ketcha. Next year the plan, we have changed that. We would like to do some of those same activities, but at our home site, um, on our school base with some of our team people, and we feel that we can do that. And we do like the connection with the Cape Elizabeth Land Trust. It seems to be a nice um, way to do things and to work with them. And we are planning and working on that together. 
Last week, the eighth grade finished up their um, outdoor experience with a work day on Tuesday. It was a shortened work day due to the weather, uh, but today they received a very nice thank you from the Centennial Committee from the Fort. That is the group that they worked with to find out what they could do to give back to Cape Elizabeth. Also, coincidentally, they just received a thank you from Chewankee for the day that they spent at Chewankee working with them to clean up things in the late fall and get ready for them to put Chewankee to bed, so to speak, for the winter. Um, and they are, of course, in contact with us now because next week our sixth grade goes to Chewankee and they wanted to be sure that we understood they very much appreciated the work that the eighth grade students did. We are learning with the eighth grade projects. We have some suggestions for next year. Um, next year, our work day in the town of Cape Elizabeth will probably be at several different locations and will be an, only a two-hour experience. And that's from some of the things that we found out this year that worked better for people. On May 17th, the high school facilitators, and this is a group of young people who are natural helpers and also people who have been trained as facilitators through the CAPE Coalition, will be returning to work with the eighth grade advisory groups during advisory time this time, and they will be touching base with the topics that they talked about before, which very much talk about an inclusive atmosphere and tolerance and diversity and also moving on to some topics of perhaps what life is like at Cape Elizabeth High School or in a high school. So um, we are all looking forward to that. We do have a slight scheduling adjustment for our schedule next year in seventh and eighth grade. From 10.30 to 11 across the board, the students, will, it will be for seventh and eighth graders, they will either be in chorus, band, or in a study hall. So that if a student is in band, three days they'll have band in three days, they will have a study hall, the same for chorus. Our advisory program is going to move to meet every day for 15 minutes from 11.30 to 11.45, and it will take the place of sustained silent reading. But the advisory groups will meet every day for, to concentrate on three areas, relationship building and, and collaborative work, touching base on academics, and keeping things up to date. And also it is where we will do our career education programming. The teachers feel and the people who work as advisors feel that by meeting every day, even the career education they will be able to work in um, and do that on a consistent basis. So we look forward to that kind of thing. Several people, um, specifically Pete and Tom, have already talked about safety. Um, it's certainly something we have revisited as well. We are. We have not made plans at this time to lock any other doors at the middle school, but we are looking into the feasibility of which ones to lock. We do have some things that we do need to keep in mind. We have the service delivery entrance for the cafeteria and things are on our wing. Um, we also need to have access for community services. We do have a sign-in system where people pick up a name badge when they come in. Kevin was in visiting with our school today and I saw him with his name tag on. So um, if they are decorative and wonderful. They're the kind that stick to your clothing. Um, we hope that they're easily removable, but um, we are trying very hard to do that. We have also reviewed with the entire staff, Carmen did at our last staff meeting, um, the safety procedures um, that we have as a system that the system-wide and community committee built. Finally, I, I would be remiss, I know that Cynthia announced to you that Cynthia Curry is leaving us and she's moving on to Thornton Academy. In her letter of resignation, she mentioned that when we hired her, I took a mild risk working with a disenchanted engineer but I, I would phrase it differently. We had a tremendous opportunity to work with someone who had the skills and knowledge of science in engineering, specifically chemical engineering, who really didn't want to be an engineer, had always, since a very young age, wanted to be a teacher. And she decided to begin her teaching career with us in the middle school. We have been the recipients of wonderful knowledge of a young person who is energetic about what she does, strives very hard to incorporate learning strategies in the natural flow of content. And it certainly has been our privilege to have Cynthia Curry be a part of who we are for three years. We wish her well as she heads off to Thornton Academy. We're not sure she's going to like high school. Um, but, and if she ever decides that she didn't, we told her the door would always be open. We'd try to find some place for her. But it is in the town that she resides, and also it will give her an opportunity 
to work with a team of science teachers, something that she's really looking forward to as she develops her skills and knowledge in the teaching field even further. So once again, we're sorry to see her go, but we wish her well, and we're really glad that she did spend three years with us. Thank you. Questions or comments, John? I was reading the faculty meeting uh, April 27th that you sent to me. I appreciate that. And in, in it, in the, about the fifth paragraph, it quotes Common as saying he mentioned that a page is missing. I would believe that's probably been corrected from the. Uh, yes, it has. He, in fact, he, being the diligent, careful worker that he is, he had that out in everybody's mailboxes the very next morning. So all that information has been received, John. Good. I figured it would be. Thank you. Other questions or comments? just have a comment in terms of uh, Cynthia Curry. I did have an opportunity uh, to spend time in her classroom. She has um, lots of energy and is very dedicated to what she does and certainly would wish her well in her future endeavors. It will Thank be you. Um, a loss for us. Okay, committee, moving on to committee reports. Um, Keith, Finance com uh, Subcommittee. Finance Committee met this evening at 6.30 in the Jordan Conference Room. Uh, Signed the warrants as usual. Uh, first discussion was about uh, about the kindergarten receptionist for the rest of the year, and uh, we have a, the consensus was to appropriate $1,600 to hire uh, a, a EdTech one for for the uh, the rest of the year uh, at 30 hours per week. I don't know if we need a formal motion for that. Temporary position for okay, the remainder of the year. That's fine. <clears throat> uh, we discussed uh, central office salaries. The central office people are really the only uh, group uh, in our district that are, are not organized. Uh, as a union. As a union. They're very well organized. <laughs> <laughs> I, I did say as a union. <laughs> uh, and uh, we've, uh, the consensus is to agree to a 3% uh, increase for them. Uh, we had our monthly discussion about our, our food service report. Uh, Basically, our food service program breaks even with the exception of the, the money that uh, is owed to us from uh, past due accounts. Uh, we're looking at trying to collect about $10,000. Uh, and George and I have promised each other that we would no longer talk about this, so we have to come up with a way to, to get that money collected. Uh, and I think that's about it. That was, uh, that was a pretty short meeting. Okay, thank you. Um, policy subcommittee. Um, Kevin. Policy subcommittee met on May 5th um, and received from, I believe, the assistant principals group a, uh, a draft policy which we have since titled Field Trips Non Academic, um, which will move forward for a first reading tonight. Um, other than that, we discussed booster activities, truancy activities, and sample policies were distributed to the administrators. In the with the hope that they will be back at the next policy committee meeting with um, recommendations on those two issues. The next policy subcommittee is on June 3rd, 99, which is a, I believe, a Thursday, in the uh, Jordan Conference Room at 9 a.m. Okay, thank you. Uh, moving on to unfinished business. Um, and we will uh, move to those uh, second readings of policies. Kevin? We have uh, three policies tonight for presentation of second readings. Um, the first is class size. And as we mentioned uh, last time, this is simply recommended size and gives us a vehicle to put a review in process should the projection be higher than um, the recommended size. The sizes we are recommending are kindergarten 18, grades 1 and 2, 20, and grades 3 through 12, 22. Second policy is authorization to commit district funds for special education. This, uh, quite often at a pet meeting, um, we are required to commit um, resources for particular students. This delineates who has the authority to um, allocate those resources in what situations. Um, briefly, in-school resources may be allocated by the principals and assistant principals, special ed team leaders, director of special ed, and superintendent. 
in district resources um, may be committed by principals, assistant principals, director of special ed and the superintendent. And then community and out of district resources may be committed by the director of special ed and the superintendent. Finally, we have uh, long long-term and short-term substitute professional staff employment. This is a, an amendment to a policy we adopted not too very long ago, actually on May, um, back in uh, June, I guess, or November. But in any event, this simply, at the, peer, at the time frame when a substitute teacher's salary increases because of longevity, this requires that a, an observation, um, a semi-formal evaluation be in place at that time. Okay. Do you want to take them one at a time or would you like to uh, present them as a, a package to us? I think tonight we'll present them as a package if that's not a problem. I move. I, I have just a quick question. Sure. Was the jump after 16 days always 100, or did that change when the 75 changed? No, the, ori changed? the original, I believe so. Do you recall something? I couldn't hear the question, I'm sorry. Sorry. Did the pay after the 15th day, was that always 100, or did that jump? The, 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 when we jumped from 15th Yes, no, we, we jumped that when we moved to the 75. And that had been 75 yeah. before? So everything was up. Everything was up, yes. <clears throat> I move that we um, adopt the policies as, uh, as reviewed tonight. Okay, second. Any discussion or questions, concerns about these policies? Seeing none, all those in favor? 7-0. Thank you, Kevin. New business. Um, consideration of the superintendent's nominations of teachers proposed to move to continuing contract status. Right. These are teachers who have been with us for two years and will now be moving to continuing contract status. We have three at Pond Cove School, Suzanne Hamilton in reading, Susan Michaud in grade two, Marianne Nahan in special ed. We have one at the middle school, Christopher Turner in industrial technology and computer, and we have six at the high school. Uh, Haven Jordan, or better known as Ted Jordan in social studies, Lynn Lockhart in Spanish, Roger Ryu in math, we have two in special education, Bed Raymond and Kathy Van Dorn, and Diane Brakeley in technology, and Diane is a part-time employee. Okay, um, is there a motion? I move that we accept the teachers um, as presented for continuing contract. And I need a second. Marie, second. Other, um, are there any questions or comments? Seeing none, all those in favor? <clears throat> Seven zero. Then the second list is a little bit longer. These are teachers who have been with us for one year. This has been their first year. And they'll move to the second year as probationary teachers. At Pond Cove School, we have Amy Karen in kindergarten, Catherine Cornell in kindergarten, and Linda Paul in kindergarten. And Linda is a half-time teacher. Karen Abbott in grade one, Eleanor Campbell in grade one, Janet Amberger in grade three, Rebecca Williams in grade four, Sarah Carroll in grade three, and Christine Tweedy in grade four. At the middle school, we have Conrad Bertium in World Language, Karen White in Music and Band, Scott Labby in Health, K-8, Karen Driscoll in Grade 7 Language Arts and Social Studies. At the high school, we have Susan Gifford in English, David Greeley in Math, Betsy Labway in Choral Music, and she's a part-time teacher with us. Uh, Elizabeth Lewis in Science, Greg Zandi in Social Studies and Ed Skills, Deborah Jackson in Physical Education, and Laura Landis, Landis, I'm sorry, Laura Landis in English. We have three system-wide employees, Susan Metis, who is a point four social worker, Sarah Ozick, who is an occupational therapist, and Di Diane Reed, who is a point eight speech therapist. Is there a motion? Kevin. I move that we accept the superintendent's nominations of second year probationary teachers. Second. Okay. Beth, thank you. Um, any questions, concerns? Um, just, just a thought. Uh, by my count, there's 33 people here that fall into the first and the second year teachers. Uh, is there a number, or did, are there any teachers that have not been recommended for continuing contract? Forever, or just this year? Are you asking? 
You ask for, for this, this for this year. No, no, there are none. So this is the entire group. this is the entire group this year. We're 33 out of 33. That's now. correct. Thank you. Other questions or comments? Seeing none. All those in favor? It's seven zero. We have a nomination for a teacher vacancy, Joel Schroeder, to fill the high school English position being vacated by Sally Martin's retirement. And I'm sure Joel will do a fine job, but he has difficult shoes to fill. Is there a motion? <clears throat> I move that we accept Joel Schroeder for the um, English teaching position. Second. Second. Um, Keith. Uh, questions, comments? Uh, seeing none, all those in favor? 7-0. <clears throat> I should mention that probably at the workshop on May 25th, we'll have to do a small piece of time as an official business meeting because we will have some more nominations, Peter. Yes, at that time. Okay. Uh, next one is consideration of request to rescind an administrator's resignation. This is hmm. the first in my long career. <laughs> But with pleasure, uh, I would like to announce that Milo has decided to remain with us as assistant principal, and we're very happy. So, anyone who would like the pleasure of <laughs> making the motion? Kevin. With great pleasure, I move that we rescind Marla's resignation. And is there a second, Beth? Um, comments? Glad you're back. <laughs> Couldn't go too fast. <laughs> <laughs> I'll second that one. <laughs> if you try this again, we may not be so nice. <laughs> um, we're delighted um, that uh, you're going to be with us. Um, any other comments? Seeing none, all those in favor? 7-0. We have a request for a one-year maternity leave from Ann Holt, who is a third grade teacher at Pond Cove School. And I recommend that you approve this, and we're very happy for Ann. Mm -hmm. Is there a motion? Yeah. Make a motion that we um, grant maternity leave for one year for Ann Holt. Seconded by Second. Marie. Sorry. Um, <laughs> little competition on the left side over here. Um, comments. I just have one comment. That's congratulations to Ann and John. Um, any other comments? Seeing none. All those in favor? Seven zero. And we have some co-curricular B positions. Mm -hmm. Andrew Lomack McNair, middle school fifth and sixth grade math team, and Janet Cole at the high school as music director for the musical, which we now know is going to be Tommy. Okay. Can I just ask a question? Is the math for next year or is that retro for this year? Obviously the musical's this spring. Right, that's this year also. It, it is this year. We've just forgotten it a couple of times. Okay. okay. Um, motion. I move we accept the superintendent's nomination for the co-curricular positions for Andrew Lomack McNair, uh, McNair and Janet Cole. Okay, thanks. Um, second, Jen. <laughs> Try to spread it around a little bit. Um, questions, comments? Seeing none, all those in favor? Seven zero. I did have two additional nominations. You yes. want to insert them here? Yes, why don't we do that? Uh, we wish to nominate Susan Daner to a middle school Spanish position. And this is really just uh, an increase in her time. She's currently with us 0.6. And for next year, uh, she'll be with us for 0.8. Um, one at a time. OK, we'll do one at a time. Uh, is there a motion? So moved. <laughs> so moved. Yes. And a second? Thank you. John, comments or questions? Excuse me, is she replacing someone who's a point two, or is she taking the board? Change enrollment, basically. Change enrollment. What a delight. Whatever Sudena has done in her class this year to um, make one of the Entwistle kids a foreign language lover, um, God bless her. As we know, his father did learn foreign languages, right? Now, no <laughs> telling, no telling tales out of school here. Um, any, uh, so we have a second. Any other comments? All those in favor, 7-0. And I'd like to nominate Carolyn Russ to a sixth grade one-year position. This is the position that's vacated by Gail Parker, who was going to be on sabbatical. Carolyn has been with us as a special education teacher, and she wishes to return. I believe it is a return to, special, to regular education. Uh, is there a motion? I move yeah. that we accept the transfer from special ed to regular education for Carolyn Russ. Thank you. Is there a second? Jen, thanks. 
Um, I feel like I'm doing an auction here. We've been do <laughs> doing too many of these. Uh, questions, comments? Will this John? Re will this require a replacement for Carolyn Russ as a special ed? Yes. yes. Other questions? Uh, seeing none, all those in favor? We have 7 0. And uh, the first. And I am through. And thank you. That was uh, a lot of work for us. Um, first reading, uh, Kevin? As I previously mentioned, the assistant principals put their heads together to come up with a policy dealing with the end of school year activities. Um, and we've titled this Field Trips Non Academic, um, subject to the superintendent's approval. A maximum of one school day will be allowed for the purposes of students providing closure to the school year. This day will occur within the last two days of the school year. Okay. And that is the policy in its entirety. And this is the first reading, so there's, uh, there's no action to be taken. Um, any questions for Kevin? Um, I have a question. Is this uh, all inclusive, K through 12? It would be. Yes, it is. It would be pretty broad. Do, do we, I have a question. Yeah. Um, on procedure, um, if we have problems with this, do we debate it at the next policy meeting or do we debate it here? It would be something that we would talk about right now. Usually you'd bring up your issues and then the policy committee would mull them over. And they'll have an opportunity to incorporate revisions and so on. So okay. it, now is the time to discuss right. this. Well, I have a couple. Um, one, the regular field trip policy that we have, non-athletic, um, does not, is not subject to the superintendent's approval. So I'm curious as to why this one would be. Um, and I thought our consensus uh, at the workshop when we sort of discussed some of this was that it was solely a building principal mm -hmm. issue. Um, I also think that uh, the having any sort of closure thing happening within two days of the school year, the end of the school year, is ridiculously short given the number of classes we have. This probably only applies to Pond Cove and the middle school, uh, but I would anticipate some sort of uh, scheduling fiasco, in which case you might have, it becomes two years ahead of time, somebody's booking uh, to get the buses for that last day um, with eight grades perhaps trying to do this. Um, I just think that's too narrow a window. Mm -hmm. So. Any, any, uh, any comments, Kevin, in terms of the thinking um, or the discussion? No, actually, uh, this was presented by the, uh, the assistant principals. Um, we did Mickey Mouse it a little bit, and we took out references to the requirement for wearing uh, beach clothes to policy meetings. Um, beach clothes. It's an inside policy committee, yeah. I think. <laughs> and since uh, we did not have the full committee in place, um, yes, and we, we moved the, we decided to just bring this forward as, essentially as written. Mm -hmm. I guess I'll just say I, I think you actually came up with a very good policy. It's not, it was to deal with what we have as a closure issue and it's not saying every grade K-8 should leave campus those last two days. This was to work for those who wanted to leave, I think, or do something different. And so anyway, I, I think the policy as written um, works. Okay. So. Other comments from, from other board members? I'm a little curious about the superintendent's approval, if, if, if that's a typical... Actually, it, it occurs anyway, whether it's written or unwritten. I mean, that's the chain of command. Okay. I don't, I, maybe the assistant principals want to comment. It was not something that I wrote. So. It's not in the other column. Yeah. So I think maybe because this was a little more discretionary, perhaps they felt... Milo, do you want to... You're nodding your head, so I'll pick on you. Go. Oh, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> Where people went, whether it was safe, something that wasn't, it wasn't, and therefore it seemed it was appropriate to put it at the superintendent's discretion. Because it, it was 
designed to live in a curriculum around that setting. Could be wide open to just about anything that you wear and it needs to have. That was one of the suggestions. We do superintendent's approval if, um, and actually board approval or notification if we're going to go out of state or those kind of things. So maybe okay. that's, there is sort of some leeway, middle ground that some things do need more approval than others. Other questions or comments about this first reading? Is this, um, Jen, you're, ref you're referencing a non-academic? The, non the only field day field trip policy we have. Which does specify non-academic? No, it specifies, specifies non academic. It's non-athletic. It's the only non -athletic. It's non-athletic. Non-athletic. <coughs> That's policy IHOA, and it does, in fact, basically non leave non-athletic single-day field trips to the discretion of the building principal. And while I'm sure that there must be some sort of check and balance in place, it is certainly not part of the language of the policy. And I really probably should have brought that with me tonight, but I didn't. Oh, I've got it. Oh, you do? So what was the basis to make this different? Because I, I too, remember from our workshop that it was at the um, building principal's discretion. What I've presented to you tonight is based on what we got from the administration. The administrators seem to be satisfied with it. If they were satisfied with the more restrictive language, they were satisfied. And that's how it moved out. It does not mean we cannot discuss this again. <coughs> but I felt that since the administration was supporting it, and when I say the administration, I've, the building administrators, um, I didn't, you know, I didn't have a problem with it. Um, the other, the other field trip policy we have is IHOA field trips non-athletic field trips designed to stim stimulate student interest and inquiry are considered appropriate extensions of the classroom and co-curricular co activities. It goes on to define what a field trip is. Um, all field trips, you know, the, here's the operative language, all field trips must be approved by the building principal and follow building guidelines for parent permission, notification, and bus arrangements. And there is, there is no formal reference to, uh, a, you know, a secondary approval at a higher level. And the athletic field, the ones that are athletic, is there any reference in those to superintendent um, approval or board approval if it's out of state? Yes. Right. I think I think regular so. ones or just out of state ones? Well, regular whatever. Ones. I can't remember. I mean, yeah, regular athletic, athletic going to Yarmouth, no, obviously we don't. I mean, you know, that's part of the athletic well, director. Of course, but, but that's not. Um, athletic director. Yeah. yeah. But then if they go beyond that, that's why we approve these other They go out of state or overnight. Yeah, and I know that for any overnights, even academic, we have to do the school board or out of state. Does it say that too? I think. Yeah, I think there's, I think so. there's notification. Yeah. So essentially this language is somewhat more restrictive than existing policies. Well, but I think Marla's um, point is well taken that they're in charge of the academic piece and therefore it makes sense and they know and when it's a non-academic field trip maybe they need to make one more check which is with the superintendent. John. Uh, this may not be, I don't know, it's not clear to me. It, 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 it. My question is what does the state require for academic school days hmm. that we have to meet? To do. 175? So when you get to this end of the school year we must have 175 days of class, right? So if we haven't met that, there'll be no non-academic trips. Is that correct? This counts as a school as a, this as a counts school, as day. school day. It counts as a school day, yeah. even though it's classified non-academic. How can you have a school day and have it non-academic? That's, I guess, been bad earlier this session. <laughs> I don't understand that. And I think that was, that was the sense of earlier, an earlier board, and that was why the it's mind-boggling. <laughs> Which is why I guess I feel like I can live with it if it's in the last two days of school and it is a celebration event and, you know, but um, I wouldn't 
want it to go. So if Duke Albany's walked in your he'd class, be a little bit astonished. you'd be a little upset. I would say they're all at the beach, right? That's right. I think you'd be a little upset. You might take away one 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 hundred and seventy fifth of our state subsidy. But. That's correct. I think, um, Kevin, would it be beneficial to just get sentiments from each of the board members just so that you're, you're clear about the support and or the kind of um, support that you Sorry. would have for this? M Marie, would you mind starting? Um, are we talking about the way this is written? Uh -huh. it, are you, we're just trying to give Kevin as much feedback to take back to the policy. Okay. I mean, I, I certainly think that you know, the superintendent should be aware of, of what is going on. Um, whether it's subject to that person's approval or not, um, if the assistant principals think that that should happen, um, I guess I can agree with that. Okay. Jen? You want me to speak again? <laughs> what, or anything that will be helpful to Kevin, unless um, you Well, cut I apologize to Kevin for having missed the policy meeting that this was discussed. Mm -hmm. So, um, I, 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 my impression of our last discussion of this was that it was strictly a building principal issue. Um, that four of us at least said that. Um, and I think two days is too short if you want to really provide this, I think. It would, it's just, it could be a scheduling nightmare. And I don't want to see it become something that you have to book, as I said, two years in advance in order to make it available. Mm. OK. Thank you. Keith? I agree that I think it's a building issue I don't think the policy is dictating that a class has to go to the beach. No, um, it's not. So other than the subject of superintendent's approval, I think the language is fine. Mm -hmm. Okay. My original feeling when we discussed this in workshop that it was a building principle issue, I still basically feel that way. And again, the way the, the language is presented in based on the administration submission to me, which I felt if they were comfortable with, I was more than happy with. Um, and I would certainly welcome any additional feedback from the administration when we again, when we meet again. I, I also tend to think that the two days is a bit restrictive, but I don't want to get into a position where we are exp expanding that time period so much that we get that uh, the entire student body in a given grade level checking out several days before the trip when they when they in fact have academics to take care of. So I would certainly feel comfortable in expanding that possibly a day or two, but other than and certainly no further than that. Uh, John, any, any feelings about this? Well, I'll repeat what I just said a few minutes ago. I find it to be contradictory. I have a technical problem with the whole, with the whole issue. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. Did I misstate, Cynthia? Am I, am I misstating the requirement of the state? 175 days. And you're saying that this? This would be one of those 175 days. Oh, I couldn't support it on this basis. Yeah. You know, I've been here too long. <laughs> <laughs> Speech days have been coming too long. There's so many better things to worry about and more important things to worry about. I can, I think every class, the last day of school and even the day before can do some kind of celebration. I wish we didn't truck them all off to the beach that we did big cookouts or did stuff here. I always think about, well, the eighth grade loves to go to Old Orchard. I have an eighth grader. Would I take a group of their friends and leave them there for the day ever? No. So why do we take 150? When we're responsible, I don't get it, but that's okay. I can live with it. If, if you guys, you know, want to be responsible, I can live with this policy. It's within the last two days of school, you know. But I think the superintendent should have some approval because I actually don't even think the burden of the decision should rest with the um, building principal because if for some reason they got swayed and thought something was a good idea, I think they need a sounding board that, yeah, that's okay and that will fly. I don't know. I think it's a, a little check. Okay. 
Um, my, my feeling, you know, when I read it was why, why would we have this, um, quite honestly. Um, it, uh, it, it, it'd be so easy to turn something that truly is somewhat non-academic into academic and um, again, I, I don't think it's a policy issue, but um, if, if other, if the uh, building administrators um, feel that something like this is needed, um, then, then perhaps I could support it. I, I just don't really see the sense in it, quite honestly. Not even having I, I don't see the purpose of it, quite honestly. I, I don't see that it, policy is to provide guidance and, and I'm not really sure that this does. It's, um, it's just one of those, one of those things. Um, other comments or public comments? Nancy. Now, believe it or not, this is going to be a general question. It's not specific to where we might go or what we might do. Um, <laughs> that sounds like a setup. Doesn't it, though? <laughs> <laughs> kind of thing. My understanding of our procedure is that this would be Tonight we would do the first reading of this and the policy committee may need to go back and answer the question, is it policy or not policy or whatever, but that it would be revisited again at the June 8th meeting. My request is that we make an, inf that to request a, some sort of a waiver of a procedure for this year so that if we are going to have closure activities, whether they take place on site or wherever, um, that we could have permission to go ahead with those plans even though a policy or a decision about if it will be a policy or not may indeed not be made until your June 8th meeting. But if we could have a waiver for that, we, I make this on behalf of the students in the middle school um, and the parents um, of those students as represented at the Middle School Parents Association meeting today. Just we want to follow the procedure, we want everyone to be informed, um, but we also want time to plan safe and good activities. Uh, finding out on June 8th and then beginning the planning on June 9th would certainly not give us ample opportunity to do that, nor would it give Sue Weatherby ample opportunity to work with us and be cooperative arranging transportation if we decided to go off-site. So I simply respectfully ask a, a waiver, but an informed waiver. We will follow the wording as it appears to this point, if that's what your guidance is, and do that so that we can move forward with plans for closure activities this school year. Question. It, well, I, I just have a comment. I'm just sitting here thinking about what you said uh, about why does this really need to be a policy? Mm -hmm. And I think at the at the last workshop when we all sat and talked about it, everyone on the school board said this isn't a school board issue. This is a, a school issue. Right. So we hold. Well, we yeah, hold so the, I asked the question: to, Why are we doing this? Right. We hold the. Um, principals accountable to ensure that, that we're providing the academic rigor to the program and, and if they feel that there needs to be something in there that so helps the the accentuate it. What came so. from is we thought, well, what is this speech trip? It's not a field trip. We'd never considered it a field trip. And then, well, what was the real issue? It was sort of more a time on task issue, and we still haven't gotten our time on task policy, I think, ever through or done with it. It's just almost too complicated to deal with. It's sort of whether it's minutes. And the last time we tried to look at time on task, it turned into the sort of time study committee. And so it became sort of an issue of where do we put it, um, which is probably why it came under field trips non-academic, because nobody knew what to call it or, or to deal with it. That's exactly correct. Yeah. And we do have a field trip policy, which says the field trips must be related to the curriculum. Right. And it's probably a time on task issue. But then with transportation of campus in some cases. I mean, so Budget-wise, it's considered to be a field trip. If, you, if they budget monies for it, it's in the field trip account. Th that's right, for, for, for transportation purposes, right. some place to put it. Lack of a, of a better uh, category. Right. Um, well, my sense is that I'm hearing down here are some changing. Jo John's not prepared to support it. I don't feel the need for it. I'm hearing that there might be a consensus down the other end. If that's the case, then I think the policy subcommittee will have a good sense about what to do with this policy. Yeah, but, I, but, but what Nancy's asking is for some Can direction for this right. year. No, well, oh, okay. well, we may not have a policy that we're dealing with. And, so. and I understand that. And I understand that perhaps the policy committee needs to take that back and still make a decision, right. which means you might make a decision as a board or the policy subcommittee may make a decision not to refer this back to the board in any way, rate. That will not be done until completed. The process won't be completed until June 8th which is, no matter what, doesn't still give us enough time to, to look at closure activities. 
no matter under whose umbrella they fall or, or whatever. And I just, I want to be sure that we're above board, that we're following procedure, that everyone's informed about what we're doing. Um, for John's, John's issue, we do certainly see it as a student attendance day, which is my understanding, which may be limited, but of the state law that it's 175 student attendance days. Um, and so, therefore, that's why I just would ask your guidance in that um, and just to have you informed. Um, acknowledged, and that's sort Thank of my que second question. The first question is, is there support enough on this board to, um, to have this policy? Do, I mean, do we want to go and revise and, and build this policy? Who would be in favor of that? Well, George, I guess I'm only in favor of we know what we're doing so that Nancy knows, her staff knows, right. and whether it's a policy or not, it doesn't right. really matter. Okay. But somebody needs to know what the decision is and how to go forward because it's been so confused for so long. Mm -hmm. So that's sort of, okay. you know. Y yes. That would be my consideration in supporting this as a policy, only for the purpose of clarity um, that this can happen with an appropriate approval during an appropriate period of time and put that to bed until the next time it raises its ugly little head. But at least it gives everyone a sense of what's a, what should happen should a decision be made that they want to do this. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's, I hear what you're saying. Do, um, let's look down the other end here. Uh, do, um, Beth is saying she doesn't care. John doesn't feel he, he's not going to support it as a policy. I don't think it should be a policy. That's one, two. What do, what do we have down this end here? I, I'm just trying to figure out whether or not we can uh, save ourselves some Well, more. I guess I, I'm sort of in where Kevin is. Mm -hmm. I don't really care whether it's a policy. The only thing the policy would do, as Kevin says, is sort of make it clearer. Mm -hmm. But whether we can just make it clearer without that. But we could ask the superintendent to draft a, a memo that provides clarification on this matter. Uh, in there, I mean, done that. Yeah, I was going to say, I think that is <laughs> Wait, can I just make one comment? But I'm really confused because at our last workshop meeting, we had this whole discussion. We went around, we took a consensus of the board members. Okay, I think it was five out of the seven board members said, okay, Beach days are fine. The school board doesn't want to be in charge of that or making the decision that it's yes or no. It's up to you guys. Um, and that's how I left the meeting, and that's what I thought we said. And now, this is all turning into something different, and I don't get it. Carmen, would you like Someone to come up, please? Yeah, just a short sentence. Someone said, let's give it to the assistant principals and see what they do. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why. So and that's what we came up with. Yet, right? You threw it back so, at us. So it's, it's back. Just a, just a point to look at. We put the word closure in there because that could be or not be an academic activity. It, we said closure and we said the superintendent because the principals or the assistant principals don't check with each other every time we have a trip going out of our building. So there needed to be someone somewhere that could make a decision that would be in fairness to all three schools. And, and we don't know what each other does when trips are concerned. I think knowing the history of how complicated this has become and how confused, it probably makes sense to have a short policy like this, even though it's probably not technically a field trip non-academic, it's a time on task. But I'll tell you, if we don't, you know, make it clear what we want, it's, it gets confused again. But, but you know what, H how has it, and, and maybe I'm like pleading ignorance here, I've only been on the board for a year and a half, but I don't understand how it's been such a confusing issue all this time. I think that this was the first year that it was, I mean, I know it's been up for conversation for a lot of years, and I know that there were certain board members that were against it. But I also, these years that this has been up for conversation, I just keep hearing conversations of parents who say, but we want to do this. This is something that's a tradition in Cape Elizabeth. It's something that the kids look forward to. So I, I don't get it. If it's just because a few board members have felt that it shouldn't happen, then I don't think that's the reason for this conversation in that meeting. 
because things change. Other board members come on. There are different conversations that happen. Nothing stays the same. I think that was sort of what was summarized hey, at the I end of the... Yeah, I don't care whether there's a policy or not, but, but I think it forget that it's, you know, um, well, this is what it was, or certain people wanted this, or certain people wanted that. It's an open conversation, I feel. Um, uh, the reason for making it a formal policy is to guard against exactly what Maria is saying, so that next year or two years when this board changes four or five people, this beach trip can't be canceled at the whim of the board, that there's a, there's a set procedure that has to be gone through through the policy committee and, and so forth before uh, that would be disproved. So I, I go back to yeah. my original, we all cared a couple of weeks ago. Uh, <laughs> uh, I think the policy should stand. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, Marla, would you come up, please? <laughs> You may be sorry you decided to stay, right? She went on a field trip. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't classify it as a field trip. Um, not to belabor the point, but in, in trying to develop um, something that would, would be sensitive to those people that would like to have the tradition continue, being sensitive to the people who are very concerned about time on task, our, our need to focus on academic, given the fact that we're the shortest you know, school year in the, in the country, one of the short ones, trying to come up with a very restrictive guidelines, policy, whatever, wh however you want to frame it, so that the board does not have to address this time after time after time, and that we as administrators have a guideline. We sat at an administrative council meeting and went round and round and round on this, trying to come up with something that was suitable for everyone. So this is to, trying to really strike a balance, being sensitive to both sides. Um, we hoped that we had done that. Um, it allows for those celebrations or those non-closure activities and is sensitive, I believe, to the fact that it is at the very tail end of the year and it will cause some difficulties with transportation, et, et cetera, but it is in an effort to strike a balance. Okay, well, now where are we? Um, I think it I th goes back to policy. It will go back to the policy sub right. subcommittee. But yeah. in the meantime. <laughs> Thanks. It, and then the second question is, as Nancy appropriately um, uh, posed it to us, will this, um, is it the sentiment of the board that this will not take effect until next year when there's more adequate time to, you know, sort of um, uh, to follow this policy? I think why don't we give Nancy the directive to follow the intent of this policy for this year, even though it's not voted in, but that if we could live with that for this year, that would be fine with me. And if the flavor, or change the word, if the flavor of this policy is sort of meets people's intent, then I think we can work within that for this year. And then you can put whatever formal language you want, but that would at least give us a chance. Uh, give you direction. To, and to plan and to talk with Sue, et cetera. Other comments? It's kind of, this is kind of interesting. Okay. Um, I this was going to be short. I did think it was going to be short. Um, I will. I just to reiterate. I will not support this as a policy. Um, I think that the, the boards do change. That's basically what Marie said. That's how we ended the workshop. The sentiments change. Um, we uh, pay people good money. They're very well educated, and uh, they can take care of things like non-academic field trips. So, um, you know. Kevin, you have the tough job of now taking this back to the policy subcommittee. Well, I will certainly take this back in response <laughs> to question number one. In response to question number two, my comment at the workshop was that this belongs with the building principal. And therefore, if the building principals are prepared to plan something within the spirit and intent of what we're trying to achieve, whether it's through a policy or an understanding, I would favor allowing that to happen. And I don't really even want to be making that decision because I am firmly convinced that this belongs with the building principles. Okay. Other comments before we move on? Okay. Let's move on then. That well, did we give Nancy an answer? I'm sorry. Um, yeah. Yeah. I think so. I think. Okay. <laughs> sure, because boy, I certainly... I, th I think this is going to be on my tombstone. Um, she had a question about Beach Day. <laughs> I, I know, it's getting sooner all the time. Thank you, Tom. 
<laughs> so I went to home as the ball game was gone. <laughs> Um, see, at least we can all laugh about it, right? It relieves the tension a little bit. I, as I understand it, we're going to follow whether this will be a policy or will not. We'll follow the intention of this statement as our guideline for this year to gather clarity around what we will do for closure activities. Thank you very much. Sounds reasonable. You're getting nods all around here. Okay. Um, that then brings us to the end of our agenda. And before I ask for a motion for adjournment of this meeting, um, there are many, many dates that were flying all around. I can't possibly uh, reiterate all of them. However, uh, there is a school board workshop meeting, which is important because it has not only the topic of football at 7, but at approximately 7.30, it will be um, the budget workshop um, of the school board, May 25th at the 7 o'clock at the high school library. May I ask the board a question about that? Mm -hmm. Knowing that we're going to have to do some staff nominations, which means posting a regular meeting as well, would you prefer to do that from 6.30 to 7 and then proceed with the schedule with 7 and then the budget? Yes. Yes. Although, will we have to go back into a regular session at the end to approve a new budget amount? No. No. I don't believe so. We're, we're trying to get some okay. answers to this, but I think that's out of our hands now. The, the amount Town said, we don't have to approve a, a line or item or something that then goes to them. No, no, no I don't sure believe so because it's out of our hands now. Oh, I, I, I would. The think budget, that we would have to do it. the figure has been approved. Yeah, because when we approve it, we only approve a final. Although right, we, we would have to approve final. the adjusted lines if there. Well, there have to be some because seventy thousand has to come from somewhere. I think there has to be a formal. I think. I think we can't go wrong. <laughs> well, you can do that. That's yeah. right. Yeah. So if you're going to have to have a formal time to vote on a new figure and it's just quick nominations, you might Put just those at the end. So you're, you're comfortable starting at 7. Or do you want to just, no, you don't want to push the whole thing back to 6.30 because we've told the football people 7. Yeah. Right. All right, so we'll leave it at 7. 7 o'clock. Okay. Um, Friday, uh, June 11th at uh, 2 p.m. is the high school graduation. Um, I did miss... Um, Thursday, May 27th, uh, PATHS graduation at 11.30 a.m. Uh, school board organizational meeting, Monday, June 14th at 7.40 uh, p.m. in the William Jordan Conference Room. It's fall right after the swearing in. It's right after the swearing in of the new board the members. The new board member who's here. The, the new board member and the old one. Well, you get sworn in again, right? Um, finance subcommittee on June 8th. Um, at 6.30 in the Jordan Conference Room, followed by the regular school board meeting at uh, 7.30. The, um, that will be the standing board at that June meeting. Um, and I think that that's pretty much it. Policy subcommittee, June 3rd, 9 a.m., <laughs> Jordan's Conference Room to discuss truancy and um, um, athletic boosters. <laughs> Am I missing anything? Nancy. I'd just like to say something because this is Beth's last board meeting no. and no, I'm not. not not her last one. It's the last one I'm going to be at that she's at right now tentatively. I'm planning to be at a high school graduation um, on June 8th and depending on what issues come up, Beth. But I know you and I over the years and certainly anyone who's witnessed us working together has noticed an energetic exchange of sometimes very differing points of view. But Beth, I wanted to say that I appreciate the time, the effort, the thoughtfulness, the care, and all the knowledge that you brought to your position. Um, it's been a pleasure to disagree with you, to um, energetically exchange ideas with you, and um, to certainly you have, I think, pushed us to an envelope to be the best place that we can be. And also any of us who walk in our building and walk in those walls, Beth, we will always remember your tireless effort of getting us a decent place to work. Because when you first came on the board, we really worked in an unglamorous place that we affectionately called the dump. Uh, we no longer do. We work in a safe environment, a beautiful building, and much of that is due to your tireless effort on that. And we truly and deeply thank you for that from all of my colleagues at the middle school and for all of your times and also for pushing us to be our very best. So thank you for your time. Thank you, Nancy. <laughs> is there a motion? for adjournment. So moved. <laughs> so moved and seconded by Kevin. All those in favor? 7-0. Thank you very much. <sighs>